Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. It's uh, September 8, 2017. Uh, I got a new video I wanted to make. Uh, there was um, comments made today uh, on Facebook concerning the last homeowner. And, and I, I've made videos before talking about uh, his death and how, it, how it's probably related to the crimes that have happened here. But, but there's a lot of information that, that wasn't in the, the videos I've made before. And, and this time I thought, I, I want to get everything I know about Mike Lawhon and, and how it uh, pertains to what happened to me or might pertain and, and just throw it out there and, and, and then show you because uh, uh, people from all over the world are following this. They're watching this and, and, and I, I think it's interesting. And so I'm going to turn the camera around and so I uh, point it here at the, uh, at the, at the computer monitor because I'm going to show you some things and then I'll talk to you while I do. Okay, I want to open up with a map of my home. Uh, I, I live at 3802 Fair Circle. You can go to Google, Google Maps, Google Earth, and, and then you can just put my address in in Midland, Texas and zoom in. And, and this is what you see. And, and there's a lot of things I think that are... Uh, 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 you know that pertain to the story that'd be interesting for people that are following this to do behind my home directly behind my home is the big Home Depot store uh, I've talked about many times the secluded truck unloading lane directly behind Home Depot there's the row of the trees you can see the missing tree we talked about that here's the alley and there's my house I live in this little cul-de-sac there's only nine homes in this little cul-de-sac and, and obviously, uh, somebody that used to live here uh, back when construction was going on with the underground facility, the tunnels, etc., they know something. Somebody that used to live in my house obviously knows something. You know, there's people that know something about what's happening here. The, the other things here is the Fairmont Park Church of Christ is right up the road. There's a video where a guy was running down the alley one night. Uh, that's not about the story. Uh, Mike Lawhon is, is, is really what I want to focus on. He lived at, at this home, and as you can see, it's directly across from, uh, from my home, and I'll zoom that in. So, so this was where, uh, no, well, I mean, Mike Lawhon lived in my house, and this is where Marilyn Delugie lived. I'm sorry. I, and she's the one that said that Mike died in my home, and she told me twice. And one time she said, I should know, right? And that's a significant part of this story. Hmm. So, so this is this is what the neighborhood looks like right here. Basically, what what I want to do is start from the beginning. I, I get a call uh, from my supervisor to be named Dane Wiggins. I lived over in Hobbs, and uh, and and he wanted me to look at a job here in Midland, and and so I, I did. They actually. Uh, I turned it down the first time and come back and had it raised to a promotion and some people have even suggested that I was lured over here and but I, I don't know that anyways uh, so I come over and I'm looking for a home I find a home on Todd Road I think it's 4200 Todd Road and I had a handshake deal and then somebody uh, went and offered the guy a little bit more money than I had and that fell through so I couldn't get that home then I got a realtor, and my realtor was Janine Pruitt. She's well known here in, in Midland, and um, and so she, I was looking for a fixer upper. I was going to take the equity in my Hobbs home and pay cash, uh, uh, and only had you know a certain amount of money, and uh, and so we're looking in a certain price range. And so she, we go the first day. She takes me around, to look at five or six different properties, and this was by far the best. But we didn't look at the inside because it wasn't listed uh, on the market yet. And so um, she she knew then that it was going to be listed. And I don't know how she knew. I guess they were going to list it with her company or whatever. Hmm. She told me at that time Mike Lawhon was incarcerated for drugs. And so so that and that's an important part because later then a few weeks later when I was told that he overdosed then I didn't think nothing about it you know I had no reason to doubt that I do have a reason to doubt that now though and I'll get into that a little bit later and so so we're, we're talking here uh, in, uh, in in 2008 and you can you can see this is when I closed on it November 10th and actually, my first day to look at the inside of the home was October 1st, 2008. I'm going to show you some dated pictures. 
and then and then Mike Lahan died on the 12th and then uh, on the 28th I met the home inspector here at this house and we, we found the back door was kicked in okay and so and then my first night to sleep here was on the 31st and then it, uh, two weeks later or whatever I closed on the home so that was it here's who lived in my house before then was Brandy Merrill and 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 before that was Morris Kurt he's a teacher a lot of people in in um, uh, Midland know who them who that is and and actually uh, I, I got some very rude comments from this man's daughter for an unknown reason there was really no reason to for such hatefulness to a crippled crime victim you know and and but that's been posted on my Facebook in the past the original homeowner a guy named Randy Offenberger I think he works for Pioneer lives up in uh, Flower Mound or up by Dallas area now and, and, and I was showing here, the only work permit I found on this house was 85. He put in a sprinkler permit, which might be important. The house that, uh, that I'm sitting here primarily uh, is uh, Mike Lohan's house. Let's see. Or no, not Mike Lohan, but Marilyn Delugy's house, which is, she's the one that said that, that Mike Lohan died in this house, is directly across the street, 3803 Fair Circle. And, and you can see here that she no longer, well, you can't see on this map, but she actually moved. So another guy lives here now. And, uh, and but when she bought the home, a guy that worked for my company used to live across the street. He was the director and he was the boss uh, in our commercial uh, department over all the land man, the land managers for the oil field. And, and so uh, Ken Slager is his name. But that was Marilyn Delugy. She's a nurse. I, I consider her a credible witness. She told me two times Mike died in my house. And I believe that uh, even though his death certificate says he died in Fort Worth. Okay. And so uh, I, we come in and, and I took pictures on the first day that, uh, and I'm going to show you how to go. You go to Facebook. You go to my photos. Okay. And, and then we'll go to albums. So Facebook photos, albums. And we, we go down, and, and you're going to see uh, 3802 Fair Circle, dated October 1st, 2008. And, and if you're really, you know, in the crime solving and all this, it'll be interesting pictures for you to look at. And, uh, uh, and I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, just one of the ones that's interesting is this one, I think, because there, there's a little ladder there, especially if, you know, if there was, uh, you know, it could be used for a bunk bed or it could have been used to go underground, you know. It was just interesting because there was a ladder there. And and so you see the house was in, in, in bad shape. Uh, the yards here, uh, there's a story about Rini Escobar Sanchez that, that disappeared three months before I bought this home from Odessa. He's still missing and it was even suggested that maybe he was buried here. And, uh, and and you can see it looks like the perfect place to bury somebody, right? That's what the yard looked like before I bought it when I was looking at it. Here's Janine, you know, uh, on one of the pictures that, that day. Okay, and so uh, going through the house. But the, the number one picture that, that I always focus on here is in the kitchen. Okay, maybe it's this one. Not that one. And what it what it's gonna show? Let me find it right here. Okay, is this back door is fine because 28 days later on the 28th when I met the home inspector here, there was a hole right there where that doorknob was, and so and that's documented on the home inspection report. So I have time stamp pictures says it said the door was fine on the first on the 28th there was a hole in it, and on the 12th Mike Lahan died. Okay, so there's clue number one right there okay clue number one somebody kicked in the door and killed him okay not to mention his death certificate says for worth and the neighbor says he died in this house and and so i want to show you that that picture and, and show you these house pictures so you can um go back and look at that okay and then so uh i'm gonna show you his his obituary, okay, on the morning of October 12th, okay, nice looking young man, he's only 27 years old, and he had two little boys, okay, so that, so they no longer have their dad. Here's a sister, Susan McGaina, she called me, uh, I believe it was from El Paso, she lives in El Paso, 
and uh, and and I've got a story about her. I'm gonna tell in a minute. And and then Sue Tennis is his mom. She used to live here in Midland. Used to work uh, at the country club. I think she worked at the private club for Clayton Williams. And uh, and then she was living up in Fort Worth uh, when when Michael Hunt died. Supposedly he died at her house. And so and then the other one. I don't know if he's on here. There was one other person. I, I've got the. I'm going to show you here in a minute, but it's the brother. I'm, I'm going to tell that story and show you in a minute. Anyway, this is Mike Lawhon's obituary, 27 years old. Okay. I went and found the death certificate. Okay. It says he died in Fort Worth. Okay. And this was, uh, uh, this is at his mom's house. It's accident, acute pr proxophene intoxication. Uh, my understanding is that's Darvis said or something like that. And, uh, uh, it it wasn't pulled off the market at the time. Now it's pulled off the market. Okay, and and that's really interesting because he died. You know, this says he died in Fort Worth, but the neighbor said he died here at this house. And and then a part of another story I have been told. You know, in confidence, where a person told me 100% sincerity, another nurse said the secret is a group of doctors are killing people for profit. And he dies of this weird uh, poisoning from a medicine, you know. Anyways, uh, here, the Odessa American, on the 14th, he died on the 12th. On the 14th, they said he died in Fort Worth. They posted that. I found that online. And then four days later, on the 18th, it says he died at his residence here in Midland. So they changed it from Fort Worth to his residence. And so why did they change that? You know, why would you go back and actually make that change? And I believe the reason is, is because he did die here. And there were witnesses such as Marilyn Delugy, uh, the neighbor that lived directly across the street where I showed you that. And so, so you can see that. So uh, the Odessa American on the 18th confirmed what Marilyn Delugy said was that he died in this house. So my guess is he was actually murdered here. They kicked in the door, murdered him, took him to Fort Worth, and, and then... Uh, uh, and then it's listed that he died there. Okay. Let's see what I got here. Oh, I, I went in and, and I mapped from here to there. It's four hours and, and 18 minutes, you know. And, and, and I even I even went back and, and you know, because they called time of death on that, on that uh, death certificate that I looked up online. So trying to get an idea of when he might actually have died. And I got a feeling that's going to coordinate, you know, with uh, Marilyn Delugy's story and then and then probably other people as well. As, interestingly, she told me somebody else died here before he did. And then another guy named Aaron Packelhofer told me four people had been murdered, died in this house. And, and I've got a print screen of that statement. And so, anyway, I'll just show you how far it is from Fort Worth. And, and, and this is if you drive. Of course, if there was an airplane used, it'd be less time. Okay. And so, uh, I'm going to move on here to, that was in 2008. I'm shot in 2012. Okay. Now, let me tell you this story. This is a police report from my house and about five weeks before I'm shot, okay? And the police were called to my home by the, by the person that was living here. And, uh, and, and, and basically, this night, I've told this story before, these police officers, there's Blake Bush, Trent Sellers, I'm handcuffed inside my home, I'm taken out, outside, put into to this car, there's a bag of pot or marijuana laying in the seat, okay? Nothing's ever said, but the threat of being framed was obvious, okay? And then I'm told by, the, by one of these police officers, I don't know which one, but one of them told me, we better not be called over here again for this stuff. And this stuff was my repeated calls, because there were multiple calls to my home for bur burglaries, repeated burglaries that I thought were connected with prostitution, human trafficking, okay? And so I was I was basically threatened and warned, don't call again. And that's why five weeks later, when burglar alarms were going off and I shot in my home, I didn't call the police because I had been threatened and told I better not and I was worried about getting framed. And so then when I get back inside my house, they leave, and then the person in my house tells me, we're creating a document trail on you, okay? And we're, as in the police, are creating a document trail on you. And and so it was after the fact, I got to thinking, did they create a document trail on Mike Lawhon? 
because when I first they first told me he's incarcerated for drugs, what if they framed him? The same secret police. I ain't saying these guys did, but you know uh, the the ones I don't know. I don't even know if these are secret police. Until we know who the secret police are, we don't know if these are two of the secret police or not. Okay, and so we got to identify the secret police. And but here's the thing I found also on this document that's interesting is minutes after I had called out right here at 11:31, less than an hour after called out, some unknown police officer made a what's called an XREF right here, and back to this document, okay, back to this police report from the 20th, from no, December 20th, and this is January 28th, 2012. So minutes after I called out, they made an XREF. To from from that police report to this one, they linked them together, made a cross reference, and showed it a gun. And I believe this was the document trail I was told about that they were planning five weeks in advance. Okay, and and so the the reason I show you this is because I wonder if they planned uh, Mike Lahan's. Uh, in advance, his document trail, because I didn't think nothing about it. He'd already been incarcerated for drugs, so who's going to think anything about him dying, right? And so then once they, I found out they're creating a document trail on me, threatened to frame me, I wondered if the same thing happened to, to uh, Mr. Lahan. And so wanted to show you that, okay? And so the sister of of Mike Lahan called me on the phone. Her name was Susan McGaina. Remember, I, I told you that already. And and what Susan said, and uh, and because I I think I left messages on several family members. You know, once I started figuring my investigation uh, of this family, going, hey, y'all have break-ins in this house, etc. And and she told me she had seen a. Uh, a Kansas City ball cap that I had found under the cabinet that I was shot from, okay? And it had to be put there after I was shot when they covered it up with concrete, okay? So we know we shot there. We know it had to be covered up. And then when I went in, when I went look at I found that cap. Well, this is Dallas, this is cowboy shirt, right? And and so uh, Kansas City Chiefs, you know, well, that's kind of unusual. So it's a big clue. So whoever was involved in putting the concrete, obviously, is a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Susan McGaina, the, the, the sister of Mike Lahan, calls me on the phone and just offers the information and says that they have a brother that's a really big Kansas City Chiefs fan. She had seen that cap on my Facebook. I posted it. And so that, that was a, you know, I, I mean, that's what she said. That was a fact. I ended up telling him, and he called me, this Brian Tennis, I'm going to show you what he said because he called her a liar. And, and so everybody, you know, somebody's lying, that's for sure, you know. And, uh, but, uh, I'm going to turn this back around here. Okay. And so, uh, I don't think that's what I was wanting to do. I have, oh yeah. Here's the picture I wanted to show. Okay. Okay. So this is the cabinet I was shot from under and, and all the evidence and everything. That's how we know. We know I wasn't shot with my gun. And, and I know, you know, the direction I was walking, the direction of the shot, it had to come from under this cabinet. And you can see the door was missing. The kickboard's gone off the bottom. It's a, the, the, I believe this whole cabinet was rigged for a, with a hidden entrance is what the deal was. But either way, I found this cap underneath there, okay? And so what I believe happened in the three mystery days between when the secret police were caught in the house and when the only known official entry by the police happened on February 1st, then concrete was poured. And I remember being at the hospital thinking, why'd they wait for so long? Because because Rosa Rodriguez come up to the hospital pretending that they were going to go to my home and start the investigation and not knowing that they had been caught on camera. Okay, and I didn't know either until after I got back, and and it took a process. I found the security camera pictures, look at the dates, and then I ordered the police reports. Then I started putting it all together. Wait a minute, you know, and and even to this day, we don't know who the secret police are. We know they were here. We got pictures of them. Either way, Kansas City Chiefs that under my cabinet. Okay, the other thing I'm showing in the same picture. It's Susan Tennis, the mother of Mike Lahan. Okay, she died in 2016, and a Facebook friend went and found this. There's a Let's Go Chiefs emblem logo on her obituary. 
Okay, so that's kind of interesting. That's the reason we hooked that up together because this was found under that cabinet and it could only been put there after I was shot. And, and it, you know, after January 28, 2012, and obviously somebody that was involved in the crimes uh, of the shooting and the murder attempt and all that. Okay, and so uh, here, let me show you here. People around town might even recognize or know Susan Tannis. And, and she, but she died of ovarian cancer is what it says. She worked at the Petroleum Club, the Plaza Club, the Green Tree Country Club. And then she's worked at the Clona Club in Fort Worth where she died. Okay. And so, uh, uh, but she's no longer alive, so we can't ask her what happened to Mike Lawhon. And that sure is convenient, you know. And, uh, and rest in peace. And just Okay, so... Brian Tennis finally got a hold of me, okay? And so so I got a message from him, and here we go. And I tell him what Susan said, same thing I told you, you know. I mean, it, it is what it is. That's what she said. And he says, that's nowhere near the truth, you know. I'm sorry this happened to you. Brother was in drug rehab, staying with his mom. Uh, uh, Susan doesn't know what she's talking about. So, so between Susan and Brian, one of them is not telling the truth. Okay, and then he tells, gives me any, some more information. My brother choked his ex-wife with a rifle and then had to be taken down. And what, what he went on to tell me was that his current wife was living in this home. Okay, right before uh, Mike Lahan died, and and that's that's what Brian Tennis told me. And um, and here's a suicide story, and so you can read what Brian Tennis. So, so basically, either Susan's lying or Brian Tennis is lying. And so, uh, I just want to put that out there. I ain't saying either one's lying. Uh, I'm just saying that it is what it is. Okay. Interestingly, okay. In tw and and for about a year in 2015, somebody signs up for magazines and start sending them to Sarah Lahan at my address. And not just one of them. Look, I mean, these, every one of these were in this one year period. And, and of course, you got to look at that. That, that. You know, that's what, uh, three years, two, three years after I'm shot. You know, and I always wonder his clue. I always wonder, Sarah is the wife of Mike Lahan, the widow. Okay. And that's who I bought the home for. I, you know, I've always wondered maybe Sarah knows a little bit more than what she's saying. Or, you know, I don't, I don't doubt, I doubt it was Sarah that bought all these magazines and had them sent to my house. Somebody did though. And somebody had to do that. That didn't accidentally come in from all them different magazines come to my house. And so uh, maybe that's a clue. You know, maybe Sarah Lawn knows something. This is an interesting picture right here. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure how much this has to do with Mike Lawn. Maybe some. This was the house that, to the right, was the house Marilyn Deluge lived in. What I was trying to show you was that she all she had to do was look straight across the street. And she's the one that said Mike Lawn died in this house. And then somebody else died before that. That's why I wondered if it was Rini Escobar Sanchez. But one thing here on the road when they went and sealed the cracks... It looked like a looked almost like a tunnel ditch right there, going from my home over to, to towards this home here, and uh, it's it's just it's what it looks like, you know. And um, let's see what else I, I put down here. Okay, and 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 then the other side here, I show this all the time. That and and I have about four or five half dozen people that said there's an underground facility near this house. Okay, which is important for Mike Lawhon, is important for the neighbor, and, and but this woman says it's a half block away. Okay, interesting. My next door neighbor had told me. He said, last four people living in your house didn't live there long. Ha, ha, ha. And one of the last, you know, one of the last ones was Mike Lawhon's no, no longer alive, and I crawled out on my hands and knees. Okay. Uh, here's a story that that is just, I think, kind of uh, out there, interesting. If you go look at the Clinton, uh, what do they call it, the Clinton death list toll whatever it's on the internet you can look it up this guy shows up on the list you know because the clintons are rumored to be killing all these people or whatever and but this guy i was looking lahan up and looking up for that area around fort worth and i find this johnny franklin lahan okay and uh 
And and this is, I, I don't know if he's kinned over here to the guy who lived here or not. I just thought it was interesting because I found it on the internet and it was tied back into to the whitewater scandal of Bill Clinton. And and basically, you can read it there. In the spring of 97, a tornado ripped through some junk cars at Johnny's transmission and opened up the trunk of a car, proved to have whitewater records in it, including a $27,000 cashier's check drawn on Madison payable to Bill Clinton. Okay, Johnny Franklin Lawhon Sr. realized what he's looking at and turned the documents over to the FBI, and then he died. Okay, so according to police, Lawhon Jr., the son and a friend, had a telephone pole at a high rate of speed. The car became airborne, etc. Okay, so I don't know if that's connected here. I just thought it was interesting. And then the another interesting thing is here is I uh, was... I was... They've, Fort Worth Telegram has since remove this story, which is almost a clue as far as I'm concerned. But the but I had copied and pasted it. Exotic ranch hid theft ring, okay, in 1998. Charlie Lawhon family. Once again, I'm doing a search for the Fort Worth area and for Lawhon. Okay. And then and then I run across this story where there's a guy on this uh Lawhon exotic ranch, okay, and uh even and, and it ties it back into the Whitewater investigation here. And it says, I'll post this on my Facebook after I post this video so y'all can read the story again. But basically found such gee whiz touches as movable walls and vehicle hidden behind hell base. And, and that's some of the stuff I suspected here. You know, I mean, yeah, they got hidden trap doors and stuff. And, and, and then what they were doing was this was a crime ring. They were loading equipment and cars or whatever. And it was international crime ring. And right directly behind my house is a secluded truck unloading lane that, that's perfect place to smuggle drugs, weapons, terrorists. It seems like to be the perfect place for, you know, hauling this stuff there for this crime ring. But once again, I don't know if this guy and this story is related to Mike Lawhon. But if it is, that would be real interesting. And so I'll post that. Anyway, um, I have another video called Died in Two Towns because of, uh, of the two stories from Odessa America. And, um, uh, you know, I, as everybody knows, the facts are clear. Uh, two weeks after reporting the suspected tunnel to the DEA in January 2012, my phone lines were cut and I'm shot from the ground. Okay. Uh, I mean, the evidence is clear. I wasn't shot with my own gun. We know I shot from the ground. I can prove that I called the DEA who didn't look and that I'm crawling out. And that proves my phone lines were cut. All that's proven fact. Okay. But then you take that the previous homeowner died right before here and all these stories, and it looks like they're murdered one homeowner after the other. And amazingly, this isn't a national news story, and, 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 and it should be. And so share the story. Tell, call the press. Call law enforcement. Tell them to identify them secret police. That's the clue right there. It's a secret police. See y'all later. Thanks.